Hi everybody, Jeff Simon here from Social Flight here at Eagle Fuel Cells with Kurt Hardwick. How are you doing, Kurt? Real good. I'll, I'll tell you, this is an especially interesting like segment to, to spend talking because there's a lot of things happening out there in the fuel world having to do with the switch over to unleaded fuels or just issues that you see out there in the general world of fuel mm -hmm. and fuel leaks. And I'll tell you, um, a while ago, we went and had a leak in the Bonanza, which uses bladders, it fuel, uses right. fuel cells. And you and I spoke and I got a lot of tips from you in how to replace that fuel bladder. And I chose to do that using an Eagle fuel bladder. Yep. And I have to tell you sincerely, I mean, you're not a, a sponsor <laughs> of us or anything like that. Sincerely, like it was a remarkably good experience replacing that fuel cell for something that has been described by people as being like arduous the worst painful job yes. ever the dirtiest job we should get that online on yeah like TV. everyone said don't do this this is a terrible job to do but using both your advice and really the quality of your product it was fantastic and i think one of the keys to that is how kind of soft and yes. supple your fuel tanks actually are so this is a bladder yeah. and I don't think people realize it's it's really soft and malleable. Yeah. Which when you're trying to put this this enormous right. fuel bladder through an opening that's through, about that size. This opening. Yes. Get it all in place and then get clips put in seems impossible. Yep. And when yet, you can do that with the whole end of the tank. Yeah. Including a baffled tank. So I want to start with you definitely gave me some tips right you told yeah. me about you know using spraying acf50 inside where you know cleaning yeah. things out what you really worry about inside there and also protecting those ports right the nipples yeah, these are nipples right? these nipples that actually you know are where all the connections happen right uh to everything and then the rest of it the ability for that to get in there was fantastic but for me it was it was the quality yeah um, yeah, the, the the way that it's the workmanship that's all involved in it, you know, the the gusseting and the the way the tank is manufactured, not only the way it's made, but the materials both make it, I would say, eighty or ninety percent more efficient than the original designs that were done. Yeah, I mean, I get a questions fairly regularly from people that ask me about whether or not they should repair or completely replace their bladder, their fuel cell, mm -hmm. or, um, and if they're going to replace it, you know, with whom they should go and, and do yeah. something like that. In most cases, based on my experience, I'm just telling people, look, there's two reasons that you should just, just get a new Eagle cell. And mm -hmm. one of them is because you don't want to be doing this multiple times. Yes. Right? It, like, it really, I would say the decision-making program is, how long do you plan on keeping this? What is your, I mean, if there's, you just got done with an engine overhaul and everything else and you don't have the extra cash for two new tanks, I understand. We can get you through with an overhaul, but long term, a new tank is gonna be what you're gonna need. Yeah. Especially as we transition into the new fuels, uh, old tanks, we can make them as good as they can be, but they were never designed for that fuel and they're gonna eventually have problems. So let me get your feedback on this because mm -hmm. I, this is, this is Jeff speaking now. This okay. is my impression of things, but I want to validate it with you. My impression is that the new, not just one with like Amy's fuel, but all of this new generation of unleaded fuels that are either in testing or are already released, um, they all have, uh, you know, higher aromatics, other things yes. that, are, that are somewhat more aggressive, let's say, with fuel systems, whether it be a, a sealed, yes. you know, a, just a, a wet wing that's yep. sealed, whether it be a, a you know a fuel cell, uh, whatever it is, then you have this this new material, new new fuel going in it. Yeah. What I've been telling people, my impression is that they they're certainly being tested against new cells, against yeah. the materials being involved, for, right. and new sealant for compatibility. But that what I think is going to happen in the industry is we're going to see all of the older cells with weaknesses, the bigger, all of the, the hoses setup. that have 
that, you know, things that really shouldn't necessarily be that way. A 40 year old fuel cell, sealant in a tank that's 50 or 60 years old yes. from the time the plane was new, a hose that is 20 years old instead of seven years old, like it was supposed to be. And we're going to yes. start seeing those vulnerabilities attacked in a way or taken advantage it's, of it's starting to manifest a little bit thing. in california is, is that it is that what uh, is that yeah you're happen? seeing that a little bit uh the the bigger thing is is and i tried to help the fa early on in pafi one to try and develop tests that not only tested new product because you know they went out to all the manufacturers say hey send us some hoses send us some this send them some that okay so they did all that testing Okay, they're accelerated testing on new parts. Yeah. They're gonna perform better. And if we see the degradation on the new parts that we saw during that testing program, and that's new parts, that would lend you some really eye-opening moments, hopefully, that 80% of the aircraft are not flying with new parts. They're flying with 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 year old parts in them. What are those gonna do? Well, they right. didn't have time or money to go after that. They wanted to see just instantly what was going on. Yeah. I don't know if we'll ever get back to testing that stuff, but it would tell me now that we're actually field testing. Yeah. This yeah. essentially with real people, with real planes in real cycle times, temperatures, everything else. We're going to see what old parts actually do. It's not that they weren't tested. It's just, Accelerated testing is not going to show you what long-term things are going to happen. Right. I knew stuff was going to happen. I just didn't know how quickly it was going to happen. Well, I think it's starting to happen really quickly. And, and I understand there's two sides to this coin. On one side, I really support and believe in the work that's being done to create these right. new fuels. And, for the, and I can see the side of it where these new fuel providers say, look, if your fuel system is healthy, you won't have a problem. Exactly. If you do not have pinhole leaks, you won't have a problem. If you do not have 50 or 60 year old old sealant that's masking its own failure, right. you don't have a problem. But I also see the other side of it. And the other side of it is, look out at this ramp, how much 40 year old sealant is out there? How many 40 right. year old fuel and, bladders are out there? And, and, and if those people yeah. switch fuel and then start to see a problem they didn't have before, oh, right. Isn't it also fair that that group have a grievance as well? Right. Um, there's there's two camps. I've always been exceedingly helpful. I jumped in with the FAA. I jumped in with all the all the fuel people to give them materials and everything else. I want to see people succeed. Reality is is what we're finding is no matter what we do, we're not going to have a drop in fuel. Mm -hmm there's going to have to be adjustments. You're either going to have to adjust materials. You may have to do some engine adjustments. You may have to do things. I mean, GAMI, obviously, they've proven they're, they'll turn the prop and they've got more BTUs. I mean, on the engine side, they've got, they won that race hands down, mm -hmm. okay? But where they're having a little trouble right now is in the material side. And they did all their testing in soak tests, which is the standard. And what we're finding is, is where you have evaporation going on. Like if you had a hundred low lead leak, okay, on your plane, you're going to get this seep, this stain going on. Okay. And we're not going to have the problems that they're having because when hundred low lead, it just flashes off. It's gone with theirs, the volatiles, the aromatics flash off, but it leaves the heavier components. And those heavier components in more, what do you call that, Con consolidated form um, actually cause problems with paints and things. Yeah. Um, and like I said, they've done the testing, but they were in soaking. Yeah. And what we're seeing is where you have the evaporation going on, that's where the problems yeah. are coming. So there's a, there's a lot more stuff that's got to get worked out before we get down the road. As far as the fields are concerned, the only thing that we saw uh, out in the field world was a little bit of swelling. Other than that, the tanks did what they did in the testing. Well, that's why my recommendation to anyone out there is if you are experiencing a fuel bladder, a fuel cell leak of any kind, don't deal with a repair. This is the time in history yeah. when it's time to get out the new, get out the old, get in the new, yeah. 
a completely new bladder. Yours are from materials that have been tested that you yeah. know work with these new fuels coming out. Yeah. And so like this is your chance to, to future proof yourself. So you mm -hmm. won't be part of all these drips on ramps yes. by, by having one of yeah. these. And like I said, I had a great experience. So um, yeah. just want to say thank you. Okay. Thanks so much. And I do want to mention something else we did at the same time. We actually switched our, um, our drain on the Bonanza under, underside of the wing over to the uh, new uh, stainless steel kit. One yep. of the biggest reasons is because when you push on this, you don't deform the tank, you don't put in the bladder, you don't put any- It's not flopping any, around. Yeah, yeah. It's not no, hanging no, out there in the wind. It's not hanging out there. It's not got all these forces yeah. on it. It's secure, you push against it, and it can be serviced from the outside. It's got an O-ring. Never have to take the simple. valve out again, and it's a Viton O-ring that lasts yeah. a very long time. So all this stuff is about durability. That's again, what we're working um, on. Thanks so much, and uh, we'll be doing our next tank with you as well. Sounds good. All right, thanks. For Social Flight 2025 with some more information, I am here with Kurt. Kurt, thank you so much. At Eagle, Jeff Simon, I wish you all blue skies.